Gentlemen, the President of the United States. Wow again. <laughs> Mr. President, Under Secretary Newman, distinguished head table, ladies and gentlemen. Thomas Huxley once said, uh, the great end of life is knowledge. Uh, not, is not knowledge, but action. Others have said the great end in life is uh, knowledge and not action. Uh, rabbinical students are taught that the optimal uh, for life is a balance between do and think. Uh, or between knowledge and action. And, and uh, both are important. Uh, they must go together. Uh, and the theme of this conference, sharing knowledge for action, conveys our deep commitment to that balance. Uh, uh, our agency is committed to developing information uh, on alcohol and drugs and uh, committed to using that information to improve the uh, public health of the country. Uh, the title of the conference uh, was fortuitous. Uh, national events have taken a dramatic turn. Uh, we are most fortunate to have our closing speaker today. Uh, the spotlight is now on our efforts, as uh, behold uh, the many cameras and press that are here. A new sense of urgency is on us. This administration has been committed to the fight, uh, alcohol and drug abuse, uh, over the course of its time. Uh, President and Mrs. Reagan have fought for almost six years to educate this country about the harmful effects of dependence and the need to make a concerted effort to stop drug use. America is now prepared to meet that challenge. Uh, Mr. President, I thought uh, since uh, the Undersecretary is going to have the privilege of introducing you, uh, I would introduce the audience to you and uh, let you know who they are. Uh, we have a, a, a marvelous uh, group of people here, uh, 950 registrants, 50% uh, 50 more, 50 more than we expected, uh, 230 uh, plus speakers, 58 panels, uh, 52 roundtable sessions, 22 exhibitors. Uh, and the thing I think you might like best about this government program is that these people paid their way, uh, <laughs> paid their transportation. <laughs> paid their hotel bills and uh, are making a contribution uh, and want to be involved in this, our, our first conference. Uh, we have six foreign countries here, uh, West Indies, Canada, Bahamas, Ecuador, Colombia, and uh, five foreign countries. I'm never good at math. Uh, uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. Uh, we've got people here from community mental health centers. We've got educators and administrators. We've got juvenile court people. We've got colleges, universities, Indian Health Service, Indian Tribal Councils represented, state and local governments, business industry, community prevention programs, uh, media, print, radio, and TV, military, local alcohol commissions, research agencies, primary health care professionals, federal agencies, national voluntary organizations, district attorneys, U.S. attorneys, foundations, parents, doers, movers, the grassroots of the country, uh, the bottom-up government uh, kind of people that you talk about. Uh, this is uh, this is your kind of group. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this audience was turned on Monday. The uh, honor of introducing you will fall to this gentleman. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, you are to be congratulated on your participation at this first national conference on alcohol and drug abuse prevention. You join me in welcoming the President of the United States. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Why do I have a feeling that I'm preaching to the choir? <laughs> I, before I get into the subject that brought me here, maybe you'd be interested in a news note. I've been rather uptight all day because up in the House of Representatives, there has been a morning devoted to overriding my veto of a trade bill that I thought would be very destructive to our prosperity and to the things that we're trying to, to accomplish with regard to uh, getting free and fair trade throughout the world. We had to get uh, 142 votes of those present in order to prevent them from overriding my veto. I was just handed a slip of paper here a moment ago we got 149. So your present speaker comes before you as a very happy fellow. I, I appreciate this opportunity to express my thanks for all that you're doing to meet one of the most serious challenges our country faces. The use of illegal drugs and abuse of alcohol can no longer be shrugged off as somebody else's business. Today, it's everybody's business. Every man, woman, and child who loves his country, community, and family. It's time to stand up and be counted. And this you are doing. So it's a pleasure to be here with individuals who are doing just that. The usual format for speeches such as this is opening with a bit of humor to get things moving. Today, if you will excuse me, I think the gravity of the problem we're discussing precludes humor. Drug and alcohol abuse are taking the lives of people we love. What can be more important than putting a stop to that? On the casualty list, you'll find the poor, the middle class, the rich and famous, hundreds, even thousands per year, dead. Who has not felt the heartache of hearing the news of a friend or family member, someone who had so much to live for, but is now gone forever? Who has not felt the frustration of watching helplessly as loved ones or dear friends slide to personal ruin. Len Bias and Don Rogers, gifted athletes who had so much more to achieve, are only two of the most recent fatalities. One doesn't have to be a conservative to appreciate that the vitality and resilience of America flow from the strength of the American family. How many wives and husbands weep at night knowing their spouse is drifting toward disaster. Today, we must all be as one family in tackling this problem. The young fellow down the street using marijuana must no longer be a problem just for his own mother and father. The fellow at the next desk at work who gets stoned and at times is groggy on the job must no longer be just the boss's headache. The young co-ed popping pills or snorting coke must no longer be excused for just doing her thing. If we care, we'll be firm with these members of the American family. And if we care, we must act. And that doesn't mean, as you've been told, put them in jail. That means help free them from drugs. A few days ago, I called on all Americans not simply to support a government anti-drug effort, but to be an active part of a crusade against drugs. Nancy recently said, and it isn't every day a fellow gets to quote his own wife, <laughs> uh, we must create an atmosphere of intolerance for drug use in this country. Well, that's the way to tangible progress. Intolerance doesn't mean punishing users. We are, as you've been told, against the use, not the, we're against the use, not the user. We're talking about the pressure, the rest of us who care can put on the user to mend his or her ways, get straight, and live right. Having quoted Nancy, I just want to say how proud I am that she has been an outspoken crusader on this serious national problem. We couldn't be more pleased. With her. 
we couldn't be more pleased than that others at long last are joining the fight. When it comes to curing this plague that ravages our land and infects our loved ones, there are no Democrats or Republicans, just Americans. Nancy, over these last five years, has shown how much one individual with commitment can accomplish. She was out in Oakland speaking to some young people about drugs, and she mentioned that perhaps, and said this in answer to a question, that the most important thing young people could do to fight drugs is just say no. Well, today, Just Say No is a national organization with 10,000 chapters across this country. Nancy, with her tireless efforts, I think, has contributed to an overwhelming change in consciousness that is taking place in America. The flippant attitude about drugs is changing. Even in my old business, the film business, there seem to be hopeful signs that they're now recognizing their responsibility to do something about this. Historically, the film industry has been a responsible force in our society, something well understood by those in the corporate office as well as those of us in front of the cameras. I would hope that in the months ahead, we'll hear public expressions of support for those in the entertainment world who use their enormous influence, especially on the young, to oppose drugs. This is especially true of rock stars who should be encouraged to have courage and to give a public thumbs down to drugs. As a matter of fact, you'd be interested to know that among that musical group or groups right now, there are some who are trying to plan and organize drug-free rock concerts. <laughs> Sports figures have a tremendous influence. I hope that every athlete will reflect on the impressions he or she gives as a role model to young, adoring fans. All those in the sports world should understand what a great force for good they can be. And you know, in that area, that would be a return. Because I was a sports announcer at the beginning of my career, broadcasting Major League Baseball and the big university football and so forth. And you might be interested to know that back in that era, no sports figure would endorse cigarettes or beer. Drugs weren't a problem at that time because they knew they were role models and felt that they had an obligation to be the kind, right kind of role model for all of our young people. So we're asking for that to be returned. And I want to thank Dr. Bowen and his team over at HHS for the leadership they're providing on this issue. One example is the enlistment of major league ball players like Mike Schmidt of the Philadelphia Phillies to participate in an education program against cocaine, the killer drug. And a special word of thanks to Dr. McDonald of the Alcohol, Drug Abuse, and Mental Health Administration, who is a real champion in our crusade. Mac has actually... Mac was actually active with Nancy's campaign long before joining our administration. The number of crusaders is growing. We mean to create an anti-drug environment in this country, an environment that will strengthen those who are making the right decisions and will cast the scowl of disapproval on those who would use drugs and misuse alcohol. Early on in the administration, we focused on interdiction and eradication, on hitting the growers, the transporters, and the sellers. Well, our assault on supplies had some notable success and will continue. But what we've launched in the last few days has been what I think is the real answer, an offensive against demand. This in the long run is the answer. Let's take the customers away from the drug peddlers. It's clear that our domestic drug demand fuels international drug trafficking and cuts at the social, political, and economic fabric of friendly countries. Today I am announcing that in September I will be calling back for special consultation 
our ambassadors from other countries which may face major drug production, transportation, or consumption problems. I'll outline the steps that we're taking to strike at the heart of this monster by curbing domestic demand so they can take the message back with them to their own or to their, the countries where they serve. Together, all countries must send the message no drug networks will remain alive. We mean to have a drug-free country, and the world should know we mean business. There are already reasons for optimism. In our armed forces in general, drug use has been cut by 67 percent since 1980. The daily use of marijuana among our high school students is down, as is the use of a variety of drugs for high school and college students. The sum total of this can be looked at as a good first step. One of the joys of my presidency is getting to meet and know this generation of American youth. I think it's one of the finest we've ever had. If he hadn't said it first, uh, back at the be beginning of World War II, when someone asked General George Marshall, what was our secret weapon? And he said, the best blankety-blank kids in the world. <laughs> Well, I think it would well be that this generation will lead America out of the swamps of illegal drugs. Drug use is a pervasive problem that afflicts all ages, all races, and all income levels. Today's young people, with their energy and ideals, with their commitment to a better future, could well have a greater impact on the rest of us than any generation before. I say we should give them every bit of support that we can. Earlier this week, I announced six goals for us to focus our attention on. Goals that will end America's drug, drug epidemic. And the first is a drug-free workplace. It's particularly vital that those in sensitive occupations have clear minds. But we're looking for a drug-free workplace for every working person in government and out. Number two is drug-free schools from grade schools through universities. Local authorities, parents, and educators can do it, and the time is now. This fall, everyone should be made aware from day one that drugs on campus, used or sold by anyone, are a thing of the past, and that strong action will back up that pronouncement. Our third goal is tackling the health dangers stemming from drug abuse. Research can find better treatments, more effective prevention, and better methods of drug testing. Our fourth goal is nothing less than a total international commitment to defeat this evil. And now that other countries know we're attacking the demand side, this should be made much easier. Fifth, we plan to strengthen our enforcement effort. That means building upon what we've already done including, where appropriate, increasing the support that is given by the United States military in this effort. The sixth goal, and the one that is essential if the others are to have a chance for success, is increasing the public's awareness and involvement in the fight against drugs. This is not just a fight for government. It's not just leadership from the White House and the State House, but leadership from the pulpit, the union hall, the corporate office, the school board, and from the media that will permit us to rid our land of this scourge. Consistent with the theme of your conference, sharing knowledge for action, we must make drug use the top item in the national dialogue so that every citizen realizes what the stakes are for the individual and for the country. Plato said long ago, for our discussion is on no trifling matter, but on the right way to conduct our lives. Well, we must determine how we, as free people, will conduct our lives, what our standards are, what behavior we will and will not tolerate. The time has come to decide on this issue and to act, each of us. And I want to thank all of you for the magnificent work that you are doing and will continue to do to ensure that America meets this challenge. Our goal is to do everything we can to help you 
have an awful lot of allies added to your ranks in the immediate time ahead. So thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all. If you'll stay where you are for just another minute.